Hi! Welcome to the continuation of my Spring Boot Monitoring tutorial. Our title for today is Spring Boot System and Service Monitoring with Prometheus and Grapana. But before we begin, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload new ones. Let's begin! With Spring Boot Actuator, we already have production-ready metrics, health checkups, auditing, and more as discussed in the previous blog. In this entry, we will learn how we can integrate two of the most popular third-party libraries used in monitoring, Prometheus, an open-source system and service monitoring. It collects metrics on a given interval, thus it is mostly used in collecting time series data. Grapana, an open source charting software for time series analytics. Let's configure the project. I assume that you already cloned the Terra Warehouse Catalog project at this point. To integrate with a micrometer, Spring is able to integrate application metrics to an external monitoring system, such as Prometheus. For more documentation, please refer to the link in the reference section. To integrate micrometer in a Spring project, we just need to add micrometer dependency. It collects and exports application metrics in an HTTP endpoint. The application data exposed by this endpoint is formatted in such a way that Prometheus server can scrape it. So let's run this application and uh, see Prometheus metrics by opening the URL your server actuator and then look for Prometheus. Hit the Prometheus link and here we can see the metrics that our application has provided. This is consumable by the Prometheus server. So now let's run the Prometheus. We will be running Prometheus using Docker for the image documentation Please see the link in the reference section below. This one. But before we do that, we first need to define the Prometheus.yml configuration. So download a base copy of that file from the GitHub repository, which is this, this one. I will provide this URL in the description, so you don't need to worry about it. And uh, add a new job entry under scrape configs. Once we download it, we will have this configuration. So we just need to add this job name section under the scrape configs. So I will commit this from yml file in the uh, config directory of the Terra Warehouse project in case you don't want to download the base configuration from Prometheus. Of course, don't forget to update the static configs, targets, property, value which should point to where you install your Prometheus server. Normally, the default should be fine unless you change something in your network configuration or the port of the Prometheus server. To run Prometheus, we need to execute the command in this Prometheus.docker file. So I will also commit it in our project. So let's just copy it and uh, paste in the terminal. So here I'm using mobx, mob a x term. And I will run this Prometheus in uh, another machine. So here I already have the Prometheus.yml file. Let's check that. Should be inside. Yeah, it's here. So we have the Prometheus.yml file. That's why if you run this, it will bind or yeah, it will map this local directory to etc prometheus.yml and this prometheus.yml file will be the configuration that will be used by the prometheus so we're also opening port 9090 so we can access this access 
it in our uh, local host. So let's run for Mateus. When you first run this Docker command, it will download from Mateus image. So just uh, wait after it finishes downloading. So let's see if we execute the Docker images command, we should be able to see uh, from Prometheus. And uh, to access Prometheus, we need the local IP, the network IP address, because as I mentioned, I've installed Prometheus in another machine. So it's IP is that sick. So let's access port 9090. Here we have it. So in the query section, expression section, we can monitor different metrics such as the number of HTTP requests. Hit execute and we should be able to see the request. So if we execute, if we call a request in this in our Spring application, for example, the dealers. And uh, let's say uh, the categories. We should be able to see the metrics here. So let's monitor for, so let's monitor for 15 minutes. So here we see that the dealers and the categories API requests is being recorded and uh, we can also monitor other metrics here you, you can type any character and uh, it will show you a list of metrics that you can monitor so let's see how about the system cpu usage hit execute and uh, let's monitor every five minutes so here we can see the CPU usage of where our Spring application is just, uh, deployed. It's very handy, but it's not really a sexy UI. That's why we will introduce Grapana, which is a charting specially developed uh, to provide uh, sexy charts. But to run Grapana, we need to run, we need to run it. We need to install or run it. In this case, we will just run Grapana using Docker. So here I will execute Grapana in uh, another machine. So Docker run dash P I'm exposing for 3000. The Docker hub container or image name is Grapana, which you can see in the Docker Hub. So this one is for Prometheus. It's also well documented here. And uh, it's the same with Grapana. You just, if you need more information on how to run it in a Docker, just search for them in Docker Hub. So in this one, let's run Grapana. Once it's running, we can access we can access it via port 3000 and by default the username and password are both admin on the first login it should ask you to change your password for security reason so let's change it inside grafana we have this interface so to for grafana to be able to use the metrics from Prometheus, we need to add it as a data source. So add a data source, select Prometheus, and uh, provide the server address where Prometheus is running, which is this one. Paste it here, and uh, that should be enough. And uh, after that, click Dashboards tab and uh, import the Prometheus 2.0 stats. And uh, let's create a dashboard create so in the left side hit or click the plus button and uh, hit create dashboard and uh, let's add a query so we can uh, again monitor the uh, let's say system cpu usage 
So here we have the CPU usage and let's monitor for five minutes because we only run in less than 30 minutes. So we should be able to see graphically the CPU usage within the last five minutes. So here it is. And, uh, and after that, we can uh, select the appropriate visualization. In this one, I think uh, the graph visualization type is good enough. So we can also change other properties like the uh, title of the visualization. So in this one, it's a uh, CPU usage. So we can hit go back and uh, add another panel, visualization panel. So let's say we want to monitor the memory usage, the JBM use byte. So we can also add it. And I think it's the visualization uh, chart is also compatible with this data. So let's just let's just uh, change the dial. This is memory usage. And uh, yep, I think that's it. If we want to add another metrics that we want to show in the dash dashboard, we can just uh, click this add panel. So how about the HTTP request? In this one, I don't think uh, this graph is the appropriate one to use. So we can create other or we can choose other visualization under the uh, visualization tab. So let's see. Let's just say that we want to use this bar gauge uh, and maybe change orientation to vertical or yeah, gradient. So you have all your configuration, visualization configuration under here. So you can play around with them to see what you like with your, how you want to see your metrics. So here we can change the title. It's HTTP request. And uh, we can put it here so that we have the memory usage and the CPU usage here, which are very important metrics when uh, monitoring your server. And uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope I was able to share something useful. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload new ones. See you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.